Okay, so we're going to go through the BDM lab from Adams Lesson 6. If you scroll down in the lesson, um, I really wish that you would be doing this in the classroom at lab tables, but we're doing this as a demonstration today. Here is the lab sheet. Uh, you can, like it says, you may use DocHub or Kami to complete the worksheet. If both of those drive you crazy, feel free to put it on a piece of paper. Just make sure I can see which questions are answers and answers match and that it makes sense on the paper the, that you turn in. You would be turning in a picture of a paper that you wrote on in that scenario. So let's go ahead and look at our instructions. Um, this is the purpose of this lab is to understand the meaning of the term isotopes and to learn to calculate atomic mass. So we talked about isotopes the other day. Isotopes are when atoms of the same element have different numbers of neutrons. So they have a different mass. So I would like for you to take a moment and read these two paragraphs to yourself. You can hit pause on the video to do that. Okay, so this is the formula that you worked with the other day. Hopefully you got something out of the video and you did some practice problems. Today, let's go ahead and go through this lab procedure. It says, obtain a plastic bag full of beans. Notice there are three ty different types of beans in the bag. Um, these are three, three different types of beans represent the three isotopes of the same imaginary element called beanium. So we are going to switch the camera and you can see I do not have an actual plastic bag, but I have a cup, okay? And in the cup, there are different, three different beans, different kinds of beans in there. We have the pinto beans. We have chickpeas, which are sort of beans, I guess. And then you have black beans. And those are different isotopes of our beanium that we're going to look at. Okay, so what are we supposed to do with this? Our second procedure says sort your three isotopes of beans into three different piles. All right, so... I'm going to sort them into piles. Here's my chickpeas. And, oh, goodness. Like I said, this would be way better if we weren't doing it demonstration style. Now, if these were really atoms, would you be able to just sort them out? No. They can't just sort them out. <laughs> if you had a really... <laughs> we have to be super, super tiny. So... So we got almost sorted, almost sorted. Remember, this is like a representation. This is supposed to give you the good idea of something that you can't see. I can't show you actual different isotopes of atoms because atoms are so tiny. So, all right, I get them all sorted out. We did get them all sorted out. All right, so let's look at our next instruction. Or not that. Our next instruction is place one pile of beans on a balance and determine the mass of the entire pile. Okay, record in your data table. All right, so we're going to go back to camera and pull in our scale. Turn it on. And I am going to set the plastic cup on there and hit tear. I'll show you that in the video. I'll try to show you that in the video. Okay. So our plastic cup actually has nine grams, but we're going to hit tear. And that's going to zero it out so that when I put the beans, I'm going to put the black beans in there first. Hopefully I don't make a giant mess. So that that has a negative nine. It's going to go ahead and take away my plastic cup for me. So the mass of my black beans is 51 grams. And I need to record that in my data table. So we'll come back to our data table. 
and let's make sure we look. The mass of the pile of black beans was 51 grams. Okay. Then it asks me to find the number of beans. Oh goodness, we're gonna have to count them. We'll push pause on that for a second. Let's go ahead and find the mass of the other beans and I am going to type above the white beans, we're gonna put pinto beans so that we're really clear. And above red beans, we're gonna put chickpeas. That way it makes sense when we're watching the recording. Okay, so let's go ahead and do chickpeas. So we have chickpeas in there. And then two, two grams. Make sure you record in the correct column because that's going to make a little bit of a difference in how we calculate. And then the mass of the pinto beans. So we still have our, I cannot see that. We still have our negative nine for the mass of the plastic cup. And I put the pinto beans on the scale, we get 33 grams. So I'll put those on there. And I'm gonna count the beans, so. All right, we finished counting. Thank you to volunteers. We had 96 pinto beans, 289 black beans, and five chickpeas. So then what you have to do is you're going to add up, add up the total number of beans that you have there. So we will go to our handy dandy calculator and we will add up Okay, we will add up 96 plus 289 plus five. So we have 390, okay? 96 plus what, 289? Yep, plus five. Yeah, that's right. Well, I didn't help people shouting out numbers, but that's all right. We're appreciative of our volunteers. So, all right, we have the number of beans of each kind. And then the total number of beans. So if this were an element, we would have the total number of atoms in our sample. Okay. And then this next row asks you for average mass of one bean. Yes, sir. Yeah. You would do it. So he just told us how to do that. You would take the mass and divide it by the number of beans that you have. So for the pinto beans, Let's go back to our calculator and we'll go ahead and put in um, 33 divided by 96. So the average mass is, uh, here is an example of significant figures um, kind of in the way of what you're doing you have a mass that's just two significant digits. You have a count that's just two significant digits. But then in your answer here for the average mass of one bean, you have five. So I would encourage you to keep as many significant digits as you can until your final math operations. So your answer here is 0.34375. It doesn't really hurt you to type more numbers. <laughs> you argue that one, you question that, okay. Maybe so. All right, so then we're gonna do the same thing with the black beans and the red beans. Um, and I'll go ahead and go through that process. You guys can definitely beat me to it if you wish to.
ะคะอ right. ่ so we filled in much of the table, and that was the first calculation question. Use your data to calculate the average mass of one bean of each type recorded in the data table. Then the next part says calculate the relative abundance of each type of bean by taking part divided by whole times a hundred. So in this case, the part is the number of beans for a particular color. The whole is the total number of beans. Record the calculated percents in the table. So we're using the number of beans, not the masses yet. Notice how there's no total for masses. They didn't want you to get mixed up. So we're going to use the total number of beans for this. So we're going to do for white beans, we're going to go 96 divided by 390 times 100. So let's go back and we'll do that on our calculator. So we're going to do part divided by whole times 100. So for the pinto beans, it's 96 divided by the 390. That's our total number of beans. And then we're going to go times 100. And that will give us our percentage. So once again, you don't want to, you don't want to limit yourself just yet in significant figures. So your answer is. 24.61538. And that's a percent. Now, do you have to keep them out to that many? No, by no means. But it makes your number much more precise and accurate if you keep more than you need. And then at the end, you can round it off. So let's do the same process for the black beans. Okay. We're going to go 289 divided by 390 times 100, 74.10256. And then the same for the chickpea ones. So we're going to go 5 divided by 390. Don't forget the times 100. 1.28205. Um, and then you can kind of see that if you add them all up, you would get the 100%. And we can look at that on the calculator just to verify our answer, verify our number. So we'll look at that real quick. If we, our last percentage plus, we didn't. Let's go back here. So plus 74.10256 plus 24.61538. Look at how close that gets us to 100. Because we kept all of the significant figures that we could, we could really verify our number way better. And we know that we have 100% of our data. So let's go on to the next instruction. Um, use the formula in the box in the introduction and your data to calculate the average atomic mass of beanium. Mass in the formula is the average mass of one bean. Use the formula in the box in the introduction and your data to calculate the average atomic mass of beanium. Mass in the formula is the average mass of one bean. So we're looking at the average mass of one of the beans. We're going to be using the this mass, and this mass, and this mass. Why is that true? Why do we need to use the mass of one bean or one atom?
because if you look at the mass of the whole pile of the beans, it's not going to get you the same percentage that you have in your relative abundance because the masses are different for each isotope, for each different bean. Okay, so that's going to throw your numbers off. All right, so I'm going to put this on paper so you can see the formula and how to work it out, and then we'll type it in. That is assuming I can find a marker. All right. So looking at our data, scroll up here. And looking at what we need to write. Okay. So the average atomic mass and that is totally crooked. Is the mass times the percent, and this needs to be in a decimal. Plus the mass times the percent in a decimal. Plus the mass times the percent. This needs to be in a decimal. We might say that a thousand times. Okay. So once again, you're going to use the mass of one bean. So we're going to start with the pinto beans. And I like to label it just so that I am clear, so that my work looks good, so that my graders can follow that. In an isotope situation, you would have your element name and the number. That was louder than you thought it was. It's all right. We'll continue. So the mass of one pinto bean, we're going to use this number right here. We're going to say 0 0.034375 times the percent. And when we put this in a decimal point, we're going to say 0 0.24, that's a really long number, 61538. Okay, so it's going to get a little bit long, and that's okay. It's just the nature of these problems. So for the black beans, we're going to use the mass here. And we're going to use the percentage of the black beans. Now, in a decimal. And then we're going to use the mass of the chickpea times its percentage in a decimal. Now, this one presents a good opportunity to think about if we're making a decimal from this number, we're still moving two places. So it'll be 0 0.0. Okay. And so I'm going to do these parentheses problems quick. Okay. So we went ahead and went through multiplied to finish the parentheses, just like you would in math. You do the parentheses first. So then we're going to add these all together, and that's going to be our final answer when we add these all together. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the history on my calculator to try to make that easier. So my answer is... Okay. Okay. That is my, yeah, in grams. That is my average atomic mass for benium. 
Now, is that actually the number that we need according to significant figures rules? No, we need to have, if we look back at our actual data that we collected in the first place, we only had two significant figures. You might be sitting there going, why did I have to write all of these? Because we don't want rounding errors in our work. We do not want rounding errors in our work. So I'm gonna pull my, my problem down and I'm gonna go ahead and type the answer here. Um, Okay, um, we solved the work, which is fine. All right, 